In this session, we will add preset recall to buttons and we'll do it with a batch editing approach. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please watch previous videos. This is a part of a series where we are learning how to configure in Reactor, how to understand and do these things ourselves. We have a lot of great default configurations, but in this video, we'll try our luck with the inspector and learn the concepts underlying. So I want uh, first to just clean a little bit up from what we have been doing before. And uh, one of the things that I want to show you is, for instance, how do you know how many places in the tree a given action has been defined? Now, we know from previous video that the behaviors for this button is right here, A4, A4, and A4 on those layers. But you can right click on this one and then highlight in branches, and then you'll have them all shown to you. Maybe let's just see if we can deselect, uh, select one of them and um, you, you know, generally just get that one deselected. Let's try it again, highlight in all branches. There we have it. Okay, so now we could go clean this up. But I also want to draw your attention to something else, which is called listening mode. And in listening mode, whenever you press the panel, the button that governs the function of that, or oh, sorry, the layer, the behavior defined in the tree that is governing the, the, f the function of the hardware component, the moment you, you press it, will be highlighted. So I would like to explore that as well. But to do so, I need an actual panel connected. And once again, I don't have a physical panel that I want to connect. So I will actually just quickly do something so you know that we have it, namely a simulator. It's called Raw Panel Dummies or Emulator. I call this an emulator. With this one, you can download it from our website. Raw Panel Dummies will start an instance of a controller like PTC Fly virtually, and it looks like this. So I'll just detach this and make it a little smaller because we will probably um, enjoy using this in a moment when we also need to control cameras. So we'll just have it here at the bottom of our screen and then we go back in here into the home screen, set up the PTC Fly and now I need to, um, I really hope that I have my IP address figured out correctly here. So now it is connecting to the PTC Fly that is in my window right here. So you'll see that I have Actually, let's make this bigger so you really can see it. We have this emulated panel here. And let's go over to the config tab because in the config tab, I promised you that we would see some marking of these behaviors when the listening mode is on. And therefore, if we have this, and I um, let's say that we go to the vMix layer. If I press this one, you see that it highlights that, okay? Then I, I move on here and I press this one again and you see it highlights A5 down here. And if I move on here, and now it's defined up there, we can see that I press it and it gets highlighted up there. So if I had a physical panel and I at any moment turned the knob and I thought, hmm, that would be interesting to, to be able to go straight to the definition of the behavior in the configuration, I could enabling listening mode, turn the knob, it would highlight it, and I could then easily, it would actually navigate in the tree. It would scroll the tree to that point, and I would be able to click it and over here change it it's in in the inspector so that's just a little um, um, pro tip to you guys we'll now clean this up by deleting this action and also this one and actually also the one down here because we don't need them for what we are going to do now next step is to go to the presets layer right here and then we will, um, let's just disable this. And then we'll use the shift key to drag across these five buttons because I want them to be a preset recall row, okay? And as I do so, see what happens over here. We get a chance to create five new fresh behaviors. Notice that this is actually the presets layer. It's a, it's a good thing to, to check that because it's so boring to create behaviors on the wrong layer, okay? So just take care of this step. As I do so and I press OK, I get these uh, actions now selected over here. So that's really nice. So now I have these five behaviors defined. I'll just click one of them over here in the tree and in the inspector, I get a chance to assign a parameter. I now see that I have four devices and I can pick one of these devices like this one. Then um, I can search up preset. And if we scroll down in this list, there will be something like preset recall that I can now associate with this. And then I need to assign a preset number as well. So I'll do that, submit this, and then it automatically selects a so-called master behavior. And that means selecting that parameter automatically leads us to a certain behavior that the system will suggest to us. We can change it, 
but it suggests the trigger master behavior. The previous videos has dealt in detail with that, so watch them if you haven't already and you'll know what this means. I feel like trying this out, so I would like to uh, find our PTC Fly panel here and um, just see if we can go to the preset page. On the preset page on our simulated panel, we have preset recall here. Actually, on, on the first one, you see there's preset recall here, and then it says dummy behavior over there because we only changed the first one. Now, I want to have this handy here in the bottom of the, my screen, and then I'll see if we can just bring up the two cameras. I don't remember which one of them this would be, but I'm now going to press the preset recall button, and you see the CIN 500 was going to whatever was preset number one in that camera, apparently. So that actually works already, and now we want to copy that to the others here. So one way we can do this is to hold down shift and then drag across them. And uh, I find that it's possible to actually go in here, choose device call, select and search up preset recall like that, add to this number two. And that means now on these four buttons, we have the same stuff going on. They would all recall preset number two. So let's check that on the camera. Maybe this time we just do it on the simulator over here. So I'll just move this to the side like this. Um, okay, guys, I just noticed that when we did it this way, it actually did set the parameter that I uh, I chose, but it did not set the behavior. So for these, we still need to set the behavior. I'll just drag across them once again and then choose the uh, trigger behavior that was automatically selected for us in the previous case. Let's just check. Yes. Okay, now it looks better. It's also like if you zoom in here in the simulated view, then it looks like we have it as it should be. Let's go to the simulator. Let's move this window a little bit to the side so that we can just use this one to recall presets. So let's try to recall preset number two. It goes somewhere else, definitely. Preset number, oh no, we did not change that to three just yet. So I'll just press this one. So we can go between preset number two and preset number one. We need to change the preset recall on these buttons three, four, and five to actually recalling preset three, four, and five. And therefore we need to edit the parameter of each of these. So we'll just go into this list, select three, submit, then go into this one and edit, select four. And you are probably also already seeing that this is a little bit of a slow process. So this is what we wanna speed up using batch editing in just a moment, but for the record of this, we have now assigned these presets. So let's just check if preset number three would be recalled, whatever that is. This is apparently preset number three. This is preset two. Okay, so we get that. We have seen that before. And then number four may not be defined. This one seems to be defined. So it goes like a place we have not seen before. So it actually works out pretty well with the preset recall. One of the things that catches my eye at least is that these labels are not super nice or anything. These come straight out of the trigger fu uh, function here that will um, instruct you by a title like push turn. Okay, so I can push and then I do what? I recall preset apparently. So it's just picking stuff up automatically from the system. We can do better, right? So we'll just click this one or click it over here and then show more and then go into default feedback and we could then change the um, title of the whole thing. So we just click here, edit, and then we can change it to uh, presets like that. And uh, or it could say camera, you may want to say camera, whatever, I'll just put in preset here that that's fine for now. I'll put in in this text line, the number of the preset that we want to recall, and just type in one like that. Okay, so that's better than it was before. I would like to now batch edit the others. So I'll now hold down shift on my keyboard, drag across them, and um, then we'll click this one, which is the batch editor, edit in a table. And now we get this beautiful little overview that would help us if we go into this field, then to mark that field and we press this one, we'll just repeat that value five times on the others. It is important that you notice the order over here that it is in fact A1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So just take note of that. If you go in here, then you can use the plus one button instead, and that will give you one, two, three, four, five as well in this case. So that is one way we can um, edit these values. Uh, you see for the actual parameter, it's still the same thing that would have to be done manually here, but it can be a little bit quicker if you went through them from this view instead of doing it in the other way that we just saw. 
So that's quickly a way to batch edit all our presets in this way.